Oh, good night. Hey, it's all going. Obviously, this is not going to be the most pleasant of my rants ever. Simply because women. Ooh. <laughs> and styrofoam boxes. Well, that's put me in a good mood already. <laughs> I just went and moved a styrofoam box, which I'd filled up full of DVDs. So I'm going to ping off all the DVDs and fill the cupboard full of books instead. Because. CDs are in a cover and books are only covered by a cover but they've still got exposed pages. So putting them in the cabinet back there might actually look a might actually make me look a bit more professional. God, look at all the sediment on the bottom, would you? Oh god, I've been needing that for a while. I didn't take enough with me down the hill tonight. And since getting home, women assholes, I don't need them. Honestly, if you're a woman and you want to have a relationship with me, don't. Because it's just not worth it. Too many fucking mind games, too much bloody bullshit, I don't need it. I'll go out and look at the stars. That's what I need. I'm in love with the stars. I hate my dog. Well, I don't hate hate. I'm just annoyed the fucking shit out of him. By him because... It's just fucking annoying, but... He gives me a reason to go out and look at the stars and... <sighs> one thing leads to another. Yeah, you know, if one thing annoys you slightly, then another thing annoys you slightly. And then the woman who bloody dumped you two months ago sends you a friend request and says, Oh, you sent me a friend request? Okay, I'll accept. Oh, you don't want to accept now? Oh, you fucking said I accept. Don't complicate shit. Keep it simple, stupid. Kiss. I just want to talk about the stars. Because I saw so many things tonight, again, that have given me so many insights into what is actually really going on around and above us. Now I've got really keen eyesight and I left them back upstairs, my other pair of eyes, <coughs> because I can't see shit up close with my other pair of eyes. They're terrible, like everything's a blur up close. But when I put them on, to go and look at the stars, it's like looking through a freaking telescope. I can see clear as you can imagine, like what you'd think is a normal star. I can actually see a binary star with my glassed eyes. I can't say naked because. Wee wee! <laughs> Bit rude. Um. Yeah, so they're not naked, but they're behind these glasses, and I can see some amazing shit, and every single time I put these bloody glasses on, like, thank goodness I remembered to do tonight, bring them with me, and once we got it fit fair enough away down the road, with these peepers on, I can see, holy shit, is that the Southern Cross? Like, normally, because the road, I go down, it goes, peep, 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 you know, it, it, twists and turns and so I'm so used to it being when I get to a certain spot that I look at the southern cross and there it is to my right but obviously as the road goes blah 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 and you finally come out to another spot beyond the next forest there it is right in front of you and so it's only just now starting to get dark and I can only see the bottom three stars of the southern cross the top one which would be when you're looking at it front on the the right hand um, which is if you were nailed to it it would be a left hand one <laughs> uh, the right hand arm wasn't even visible at this stage let alone the tiny little one that we also have on our flag here in Australia I have to keep reminding you globetards that yes 
Australians realise the Earth is flat too, because I always see the Southern Cross every night, every time. Every time I go out and see the stars, there it is. And then tonight, again, as I go and look behind me, it's gone a few more degrees this time. It might be another, like, four or five degrees towards the north there is the constellation of Orion. Seriously. In fact, I had a bit of a laugh about that. Is it Sirius? Orion? Osiris? The great pyramids of Giza still align up with it. However you look at it, it never changes. And the funny thing was, because this is what I'm going to talk about tonight, the funny things I saw, this is one of the first, was, you know how you see the bing, 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 the three stars in alignment? I says to myself, I bet you each one of those stars is a representation of when that particular king incarnated here onto earth and became a great king and did amazing things such as building the pyramids or creating some other great place. And as soon as I said that, above the one that appears top to me, because there's no top and bottom in space, you know, we all know that, but it's one that appeared highest from my perspective. Another star just above it flashed, as though to say, yeah, you're right. So, I do believe the stars, seriously, seriously, are, Exactly as they said in the Lion King, they are the great kings and queens of the past looking down over us. Because then when I looked over, over yonder, one of the first stars that I saw, not the first, because usually the first is Venus, um, but this particular one, looking at it through my telescope glasses, holy crap, that good, by looking at the stars, useless for every day looking around the room but I could see it was a binary star oh god women she's still sending me messages it was a binary star <sighs> bloody women just shut off and shut up and leave me alone and I will stop my mouth dot, dot, dot. you could have done that after your last statement please just <sighs> just to throw me off my train of thought oh my God. it's one of the beauties of my um glasses is that I can see satellites. Now, this is probably the best proof that satellites do not exist. Because the Earth, as we know it, as a globe, is apparently on its 66.6 .6 degree or 23.4 degree tilt spinning on its axis as it goes around the sun. Okay. So that means it's always going toward the east so that everything passing over it should be appearing to go toward the west. Now the stars don't ever do that. But you would think at the very least satellites. Satellites they're not millions and billions of light years away or you know, miles might only be four light years, but that's millions and billions of miles away. Satellites are relatively close. So they should be doing what we see the moon doing, for example. Rising in the west, <laughs> east, setting in the west. Because of the Earth's rotation. Every single satellite I see, particularly tonight, because that's the most precious in my memory. They're all going from south to north. How the f is that possible? It's not possible 
And now I watched the aeroplanes. That's the one of the first things I see as it's getting dark is you start, suddenly start to notice how much you can see the aeroplanes. And here's one over there towards the east going from the south towards the north. And then when I turn around and look behind me, here's another one going from the south towards the north, sort of towards the west, from where I'm at. So they're all on this south-north trajectory, which is 95% of planes are always doing, going from the south to the north, because maybe that's when they're going into their daylight over in the north, and so, I don't know. I don't look into the, the flights that are going on. But I do know that when you see one of these planes, which I saw tonight, again, coming from the west towards the east, if not slightly northwest to southeast, is that that's never a good thing. These are not normal commercial airliners. There's no aeroplane here so close to the east coast. Byron Bay is just over there. As far as the plane's flying, by the time I can see it over there, it's over the coast. Okay. This is something I've learned a lot from perspective and watching clouds and watching the heights of things. I know what's going on and when I see these planes, nothing good ever comes from it. It means we're in for another weather event because every time, and I'm not always out there all the time, 24 out of 7, watching this shit going on, but every time when I see one of these planes going from the west to the east at that particular height. They're these military planes and they're the ones that are involved in this weather manipulation. Call it... <coughs> cough, cough. Chemtrails. Geoengineering. There's a lot of shit going on with our weather and it's been going on for a lot longer than we even know. I've only been following it for the best part of 20 years, 18 years. But... The more you look into it, the more you know it's been going on. They were doing it, the Vietnam War. They were Since they've hit the air, they've been trying to fuck things up. Throwing chaff up in the air, throwing all sorts of shit to affect their enemy. And, you know, starting with the most crude of things to the point now they've got it down to a fine art. They control our weather 100%. They can make it flood if they want. They did it this time last year. No doubt, in the next two weeks, we're in for another severe weather event somewhere around and hopefully and this is the beauty of trying to get it out there in the first place before it happens is that by letting people know about it quite often it stops it from happening in the first place don't ask me how that works but if you're ignorant of it and nobody re reveals it that happens like the flood we had last year which frickin' decimated Lismore. You know, it's still recovering. So, the satellites that I'm watching, south to north. Now, how does that make sense if their planet is travelling pretty much west to east, which makes everything appear to go over us backwards, east to west? Are we also spinning the other way? I don't think so. No, no, no. We're, the Earth is in the heliocentric model. It's shown as though there's a fucking rod straight through the planet between the north and the south poles and we spin on that around the sun. That's the only explanation they have for why we've got seasons and all the rest. So now the stars. As I'm saying, I've got bloody good eyesight and I'm looking at the stars. And I'm looking at these little satellites. They're, these are fixed, tiny dots. They're not flashing. They're not doing anything particularly out of the ordinary. And as I'm watching them, I can tell from my depth perception, they are at the same height as the stars. When an aeroplane comes by, I can say, oh, that's a fraction of it. It's not even a third of the height. Don't ask me how I can tell. I can tell. I can look. I can see by comparing it to the other stars around it that this tiny little light is swimming or floating or flying or whatever it is doing up there with the other stars. So it's at the same height. Which makes me think it's not really 
that particularly high after all. The stars are actually quite near and they'd be pretty much then where you'd think the firmament is and most experiments that we've done to show the height of the firmament is only about 75 miles. So let's just round that off and call it 100 kilometres. So at 100 kilometres, very few planes, in fact I don't think any have ever flown that high. And they wouldn't because once they reach a certain height they say they have to put on a space suit or something to so they can breathe. Anyway, I'm not going to go into all the space travel bullshit. I've always said the International Fake Station is internationally and intentionally fake. There's nothing in space. What we see with the stars, exactly what we see. They are right there. They're 70 to 100 miles away maximum. And ones that are fainter and fainter, either they're further away, or they're just not as great a soul as the great stars. I mean, you look at all our terminology, people being a star, being a great star, a rock star, all sorts of um, things that we actually say and believe in all the time about the stars and yet when it comes down to looking at what's actually there are we just oh, well, they're just um distant suns different distant um they're right there go out and have a look at them and this is the other thing which I challenge anybody with a decent camera to do. Like I know it's pretty hard because most cameras they sort of focus on, you know, two foot, three foot, four foot, eight foot, twenty foot, a hundred foot. But once they reach like a few hundred foot, they've just reached this infinity um infinity uh focus. That you can't focus any further than that. Well then Here's what I'm here to tell you, is that I can. These are the prescription glasses I'm wearing. I can focus on this star over here, and this is exactly what I did tonight, is I'm watching this particular, call it a satellite if you will. I just call it a UFO because it is an unidentified flying object. It looks just like a star, but it's moving at the speed at least of an aeroplane no flashing lights whatsoever way way up high and at least up as high as with the rest of the stars and so I'm watching this walking along so it's appearing to my right slightly walking back up the hill and then as I'm watching it a tiny flash goes off like a flash of a camera type of thing but it's way the hell up in the sky and I think that's really odd so as I'm watching it these particular lights the, the flashlight kept going up like this and it only flashed once every like 10 15 seconds quite randomly it wasn't timed at all but every now and then it would flash and meanwhile this other one is sort of going well it's going across like this so it looks as though it's going up it's going towards the north. Try and understand perspective when you're looking at everything and you think it's all. Is it parallel lines? I don't know. So the one going up is actually coming towards me. But anyway, the, this little light kept flashing. And I'm going, that's really odd. I'm trying to watch this tiny little dot up in the stars going across over here. And then all of a sudden you see this little. So I had to focus both my eyes in two different places, which was really cool. It was a great exercise, actually. I enjoyed it. So I'm watching the, the one that's continuously moving because I know where it is. It's my, my fixed moving point. And then at the corner of this eye, I keep watching this one going flash. And after a while, I thought, 
this is too bizarre. It's, it's just too bizarre. I'm going to now count. Now, after seeing about 10 flashes, I'm going to count how long between each flash. So the next time I saw one, I went, right, one. Counted it out, got the 15, not another flash. <laughs> it's almost as though it knew, <laughs> it was aware that uh, he's onto us. That how about that's not flash anymore? It's like, come on, you have got to be kidding me. Not that I care. And I watched this other one fade away. And here's the other thing, which I noticed. Again tonight, I've been meaning to talk about this one for ages. I probably have mentioned it briefly before, but this is a hugely important part of the observation of stars and how we have to be on a flat Earth with the sun passing over around us. As, as I mentioned, as I'm walking down the hill, looking towards the south, south, south sort of east, there's the Southern Cross appearing. Okay. As I look all the way across towards the east, to the north, up above me, Orion, there's one particular star directly above me, which I'm freaking in love with. I think it's a beautiful star. I haven't mentioned it before. And I have mentioned I don't call them by names, apart from Orion, because that one just gets stuck in your head as a kid. I look at them as that particular star. Oh, I remember you. Oh, you're all that really bright one. You're all that one. You're this one. You're that one. I don't want to know them by names other people have given them. I don't even want to give them names myself. I refuse to do that. To me, that spoils the majesty and the beauty of them. I just want to say, hello, beautiful. Hello, beautiful. Hello, beautiful. To every single one of them. Same as I do with the animals, the crickets, the bats. All of them. Everything is, hello, beautiful. That is how you communicate. By recognising the beauty in what you're seeing and not trying to classify them into something that your mind can put into a little file that satisfies you, your ego, because you're not living in the moment. To live in the moment is to look at everything. Hello, beautiful. And let that be the moment. Let it be. So, as I'm saying, I'm walking down the hill. All these beautiful stars coming out, including that binary one I was talking about before, which I could interrupt you. Which I'm trying to say. I'll go back to that very briefly. Binary stars, a king and queen, still together in the afterlife. Heard it here first. So, look at all these beautiful stars, but then when I look to the west, there's a feeling I get when I look to the west and my spirit is crying for me. Learning. Even when all the stars of Orion have come out, all the stars of the Southern Cross have come out, including that one I was talking about. Looking to the west, there's still this bluish tinge of sky and not a single star to be seen. Which just proves that the sunlight as it's receding away across the plain is still too bright and still illuminating too much of the atmosphere, especially because here in Australia, when it's heading west, there's bugger all mountains. I mean, we've got our great dividing range. But apart from that, it's like the Great Plains all the way to frickin' Western Australia. And they're three hours behind us, so it might be dark here for one and a half hours. It's not even going to set in Western Australia for another one and a half hours. So all this light coming from the sun is still bouncing around and hitting our atmosphere, and that's why we can't see any stars whatsoever. It's almost like a light cloud over the whole western horizon you can't see stars and it was only as I was finally coming home like two hours after it's after the sun had set 
that some of the stars in the west were starting to appear very, very faintly. How good is that? That proves it 100% that the sun is going around the flat plane and when it's far enough away we can see the stars where they exist because enough atmosphere is blocking the sunlight because the sunlight is not infinite but it's obviously strong enough, superior enough, for long enough to prevent us from seeing the stars in the west for hours after every other star is fully illuminated. Like, by the time I got back up to the top of the hill here, the entire Milky Way is this big band of beautiful, <laughs> you know, glowing white, sparkling jewels all across the sky. And still in the west, there was this faint blue glow. Still, even when the Milky Way is 100%, as visible as it gets. I mean, it's going to be a good night after all. Like, I was a bit concerned because there were so many clouds hanging around and it was one of the reasons I actually went out was to go and watch the clouds. Turns out, clouds aren't everything you believe they are either. They are entities in some of them. It's flashing at me now. I'm running out of time, so... I'm going to have to wind this one up. Go and focus at the stars. Go and look at them. And then when you find a satellite, what you think should be a satellite, watch it. Look at all the stars at once. Ask yourself, why are they all in focus at the same time? And yet even the telegraph pole in between you and them is kind of in focus as well. They're not that far away. They're quite near. They're watching over us. They are part of us. Part of who we are. They are the angels watching over us. And we are the star seeds. Of course they want us to survive. To succeed. To thrive. So that we can go and join them. See ya.